the FCC grants SpaceX Starlink customers faster speeds. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we're coming to the end of a little bit of Misty Morning. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. Something very major happened. Major. When it comes to the FCC and SpaceX Starlink, this is really big. And I briefly spoke about this on the live show on Friday. It just came out the same day. And I want to tell you more about it today and break it down as to why the majority of us SpaceX Starlink customers are going to experience faster speeds, especially faster upload speeds, but both faster speeds in general. I'm going to get into that today. And I think that this is one of these things that a lot of people are going to be interested in because everyone wants faster internet, right? We want faster service, lower latency, right? This is what we're looking for. And this is exactly what the FCC has granted to SpaceX. So before we get into this article that I found, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you enjoyed this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And then click this little button over here. So when I go live and a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content after watching this video, well, I put together a playlist or a podcast specifically for you. Go check it out over on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Jake Christina, and then look for playlists. You will find it there. 195 helpful videos just on Starlink, how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and the why behind it all. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there is a thank you button down there. That would be fantastic. But if not, that's all right too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Finally, I am doing the May 3000 push-up challenge. So for the entire month of May, I will be doing push-ups, 3000 push-ups in total, benefiting the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So if you donate on any one of these videos, all of those proceeds are going to go directly to St. Jude. So look for that donation button, not the thank you button. That's for the channel, but the donation button, click that. It benefits the kids. Finally, if you're looking for a VPN or faster speeds or for me, better reliability, check out Speedify. I have a promo code that you'll get 20% off. Down below, there's also a link. You can use that link. It'll automatically give you 20% off or you can use promo code JCristina when checking out. So let's get right into this article. I'm going to give you my perspective on it, but also I want to hear yours. So down below in the comment area, let's have this discussion. I think this is really, really going to be good. And this might be the reason why on Friday, tens of thousands of Starlink customers were without service. I'll get into that before the end of this video. Anyways, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX has received a crucial Federal Communication Commission or FCC authorization for its Starlink satellite internet constellation. The firm, which has rapidly built out the Starlink network and launched more than 4,000 satellites to date, nevertheless suffers from high usage in certain areas and low in others, even as it rushes to populate orbital shells or those fairings with the satellites. This led to a degradation in internet speeds for users in North America, but now it appears as if the internet speeds might be improving. The FCC has approved SpaceX's request to increase the transmit duty cycle of its second generation user dish after SpaceX submitted data to the commission outlining what doing so would not violate any radio frequency emission regulations. This is very important. Radiation is not a good thing. And there is a certain acceptable amount. And according to what SpaceX said in the information they provided to the FCC, they would not be accepted exceeding that regulatory amount. The FCC approves massive transmit duty cycle upgrade for Starlink. 
SpaceX's application revealed that its new dishes would have a duty cycle of 14%, implying that they would communicate with satellites for longer. However, this percentage was later reduced to 10.5% due to the changes in the commission's radio frequency calculation. Following the second generation user dish application, SpaceX submitted another request to the FCC to test 200 user dishes at higher duty cycles to evaluate their performance. Now, if you don't remember, about two months ago or so, I said that SpaceX was going to be testing 200 new terminals, 200 new dishes, or as I call them, Mr. Bevels. And at the time we were speculating, well, are they going to be testing different sizes, right? Was that the case? And we really didn't know. Well, this obviously means that they were not testing sizes or maybe not only sizes, but they were testing duty cycle. And how much, how much of a frequency or how much of a percentage duty cycle they can get away with and still come in under the FCC approved amount of radio frequency, that radiation, right? So I think that's what was going on a couple of months ago. Now, I think it's a little bit clearer. <laughs> Anyways, the article continues. Keeping up the pace of upgrading its dishes, SpaceX followed these steps with another application in December when it asked the FCC to allow it to increase its duty cycle to 17.5%. So we were at 14%, then they went back down to 10.5%. The current duty cycle, I think, is at 7 or 8%. It's not that much. So in December, what SpaceX asked for was 17.5%. And the reason being is they gave them hard facts, hard data. The article continues, SpaceX submitted this application application after testing the Starlink user dishes at a maximum transmit duty cycle of 100%, or in other words, a scenario where they would always communicate with satellites. These tests utilize the flat shape of the second generation Starlink dishes, and they demonstrated that opposed to the new rules, which had laid down a maximum duty cycle of 10.5%, the dishes could in fact transmit up to 17.5% of the time without exceeding any radiation hazard limits. The FCC has approved the application for the higher duty cycle, which will improve Starlink's performance. The longer duration of the dish's communication period will directly impact the upload speeds of Starlink users. This is because the terminals will be spending more extended periods of time communicating with the satellites. However, the overall speeds can also improve significantly since the terminals will be able to make up for frequent information losses between them and the orbital satellite. So what this means is the communication between your dish and the satellites will be happening on a more frequent period of time. 17.5% of the time it's going to be connected, whereas before it was definitely under 10%, more probably like 6 to 8%. So we're looking at almost a doubling of the amount of connection time. All right, this is major, this is really big. Additionally, the longer the dish communicates, the faster they establish a link to newer satellites. So what this means is not newer satellites, but as the satellites are coming by at 17,000 miles per hour, they are handing off the baton to the next satellite. So if it is on and communicating more often, what will happen is, is that transition between satellite to satellite will happen immediately because it is on, it is communicating. It doesn't have to turn back on and then reacquire for that split second or that millisecond. So this is really, really important. And this is great. The article finalizes, this will reduce in overall times and lead to fewer communication drops. SpaceX has launched more than 4,000 Starlink satellites to date. A plan to launch tens of thousands more to gain a foothold in the market that will be opening soon to Amazon's Keeper subsidiary, securing a rocket and launches its own satellite. Satellites. Ah, I don't really think that that's going to happen very soon. I don't see Amazon's Keeper coming into play for another year, maybe even two, because of the lack of satellites that they currently have. Anyways, that's for another video. Now, talking about this and this duty cycle, this is a really big deal. Like I said, the duty cycle is probably going to be 2x. And if that is the case, we should be able to get 
or C, lower latency. We'll also see faster, definitely faster upload speeds. And we will also see a slight increase in download speeds. But what will really be great here is we're going to have less outages. And now when I say outages, I'm not talking about like 15 second outages while the whole system is down. I'm talking about those micro outages where you get two seconds out, one second out, 0.5 seconds out. Those outages really hurt when it comes to doing like a Zoom meeting or if you're broadcasting, you're doing a stream or something, those outages are not great because those small outages produce CRC errors or errors where the transmitted data didn't get there, right? So then what happens is, is now your unit has to resend the same packet all over again because of that slight outage. So you get this retraining back and forth, back and forth. So your dish sends the packet and then the satellite says, hey, I got it. No problem. It sends the next packet. It's like, hey, I didn't get it. It's a problem. It has to go and send the same packet all over again. And this happens over and over and over based on these little micro outages. This is going to reduce it. And I'm going to speculate 2x. All right. That is amazing. And for me, upload speeds are everything. And seeing a major improvement in upload speeds is going to be massive. Now, in this article, when they refer to new dishes, what that means is generation two dish, the basically the dish that is flat. OK, not the oblong one, the round dish, not that one. We're talking about the flat dish. Those are the ones that are going to be able to see the increase here or the benefit. So if you're currently using a generation one round dish, it might behoove you to pick up one of the flat dishes. Moving forward, you're going to get a better experience using the flat dish and the third generation, the next generation dishes that come out. Because once again, you're going to get two X, let's say, as far as that duty cycle. That is major, that is big. Now, when I was reading this article, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if this is the reason why Starlink went down for tens of thousands of people on Friday. We were live. Luckily, we had both Starlink and T-Mobile running through Speedify, so we didn't go out at all, right? Which was really nice. But I wonder if this was the reason. Since the FCC granted that new duty cycle, does that mean that they installed new firmware right across the board? And then, of course, after installing the firmware, the unit has to reboot itself, and then once it's rebooted, then the dish has to acquire signal again. So that could be the reason why a lot of us went out on Friday for about 25 to 35 minutes. Like I said, there was tens of thousands of people that this happened to. Maybe this is the reason. Now, there is one other thing that I want to cover here, and I guess it would be like a PSA or a public service announcement. Since they will be upping that duty cycle, let's say 2x, what this means is the unit itself is going to produce a lot more radiation or electromagnetic radiation or EMR or EMF or whatever. So it's going to produce more. Now it is going to be in the guidelines of the maximum allowed by the FCC so that it is safe. But moving forward, if you're using one of these flat dishes on the top of like an RV where it's literally close to your head all the time, I don't know how great that is, okay? In my personal opinion, if you are RVing, maybe you have the dish mounted on something that allows you to quickly detach it. So when you get to your campground or to your location, you take it off the roof and now mount it on the ground away from you, not over your head 24 seven, right? Just an idea. Because like I said, once again, the electromagnetic radiation produced by the dish is most likely going to go up. Now, it's not going to be 2x the radiation, I don't think, because the duty cycle is 2x, but I don't really know. I'm not an authority on radiation, but I'm going to say that it is going to go up some. And having it that close to you is probably not a good thing. Now, like I said, according to the FCC, it is safe at 17.5% duty cycle, but it's just something to be aware of, in my personal opinion. So like I said before, if you have a generation one, you might want to go and grab a generation two, one of the flat dishes, because you're going to get better service going forward. I'm not sure if it's turned on as of yet, but if it was having to do with that firmware update on Friday, 
It might be. So I'm going to do some tests this week to see if my speeds have gone up. And I'm definitely going to hone in on that upload speed to see if it has. And if you will be so kind, share your speeds down below and give us an idea of what they were and what they are now. Did they increase any? Just let us know. The FCC allowing 17.5% duty cycle over the less than 10%, probably more like 6 to 8. This is a big, big deal. And like I said, it's a 2Xing of duty cycle. So we're going to have communication between your dish and the satellite twice as much. Okay, this is major. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, throw it a thumbs up. That would be fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Don't forget on Friday, we do go live. Check us out there. We also have a Discord server. Go check it out over at community.jcristina.com. Once again, community.jcristina.com. Pick up my books, jcristina.com forward slash books and all of those things. And finally, Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you in a vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.